to uh, you know talk a little bit about um, the, uh, the the situation of Wikipedia as a a dominant or maybe in some ways the dominant uh, public forum for facts um, today. Um, if you think about uh, how people are getting information today, um, I. I I always think it's sort of fun. I get a lot of questions uh, when I'm talking to reporters, and people like to use the term uh, mainstream media. Uh, but if you take a look at um, the online world, and you take a look at uh, CNN, BBC, New York Times, ABC, NBC, CBS, um, Wikipedia has more traffic than all of those combined. Um, and so in a certain sense, we are the mainstream media now, um, which is a pretty big change that's happened pretty quickly. Um, and we are uh, really very, very global. And I think it's interesting uh, to talk about the, some of the experiences that people are having globally, because the situation of uh, public dialogue and public discourse uh, in the English-speaking uh, world uh, is, is very familiar to everyone. Uh, but what's really interesting to me is some of the things that are going on um, all around the world. So uh, for example, we know about um, the recent uh, election troubles in Iran. And I was very curious to find, uh, you know, what was, what was going on in uh, Farsi Wikipedia, which is at fa.wikipedia.org. Uh, what was going on in, in the Farsi language Wikipedia around the Iranian elections? Because, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of things were going on online as people were uh, on Twitter and so forth. And, um, so I had someone who is uh, fluent, uh, native level fluent in both Farsi and English, uh, translate the entry from the Farsi Wikipedia um, for me. Um, now, of course, translation is very difficult to get the nuances and so forth. But what I was really curious about is, would the article uh, satisfy me uh, with respect to our standards of neutrality? Um, we used to have a lot of concern that in some places around the world, what if the local Wikipedia gets taken over by extremists? Of course. The most uh, common type of extremist who might take over a Wikipedia like this would be um, people like me, uh, because our community tends to be, uh, uh, you know, sort of the tech geek, uh, cyber utopian, libertarian-ish types, uh, and that's true all around the world. So I was curious to know, uh, you know, what, what was going on there. Uh, and the, so the translation, uh, it turned out that I was pretty much super happy with it. Um, it was exactly what you would hope for from a good Wikipedia entry. Now, it was smaller, shorter than the English version, uh, but it basically just gave the facts. There's been an election, uh, the following results were announced, uh, the opposition has uh, disputed the results, there's been some unrest, uh, these things happened, that, those things happened. It was basically just the facts that, that you would hope that a person who is there in Iran um, and they realize there's something going on, and they're making it over. They don't trust the media because it's under the government control. Uh, they just want to get the basic information of what's going on without a lot of opinion. Um, that's good. This is not Arabic. It's it's Persian. Yeah. Yeah. It's Persian. <laughs> it's Persian. Uh, it's, uh, Persian. Now this will be really interesting. Uh. To see what Google thinks. Um, Yes, so that's one example uh, of something that's going on uh, that I was really pleased to see. And uh, we're generally available in, in Iran. They do have some filtering on the internet. Um, another place I was in China about two years ago, and this is when we were still banned in China, and I went and I visited uh, high school students there. Um, and uh, I asked them, I was curious to know, you know, um, what websites do they like? Um, you know, what's your favorite website? Uh, YouTube. Uh, they like funny cat videos, just like people's students <laughs> everywhere. Uh, they like YouTube. Um, I said, do you ever use Wikipedia? Have you heard of Wikipedia? Nothing. Never heard of it. Uh, knew nothing about it whatsoever. And by the way, even though we've been accessible in China now for about a year and a half, I was just in Beijing and I, I did, went with a tour guide, an English-speaking tour guide, giving me a tour. And usually when I'm into tour guides, I love Wikipedia because they grip all their notes from it. But I asked him about Wikipedia, he had never heard of it, um, even now. Uh, but the, speaking of this Chinese high school student, I, I on my phone, which um, if you have a, a, a cell phone that goes out to another network, it's not censored in, inside China, because uh, it's like a virtual private network out. So I called up the very famous photo of Tiananmen Square and the, and the guy in front of the tank, and showed the photo to the students, and um, they 
had never heard of this or seen this. They knew nothing about this photo. Um, well, that's sort of interesting uh, that, that the censorship in China is working very well, but nonetheless, um, we're now accessible in China, although certain pages like Tiananmen Square are filtered. Um, but information is coming out, and then, uh, you know, people have reported to me uh, that in the Chinese Wikipedia on certain uh, difficult topics, um, that the, the Wikipedia entry is pretty much what you would hope it would be. Uh, it's very neutral, it sort of explains things in, in the typical Wikipedia way. Uh, and then finally, one last example um, is uh, I was in Lithuania and I was visiting with the, uh, the president of parliament. He's not the president of the country, he's like the head of parliament, but he's not quite prime minister. I, I didn't quite understand his job, but anyway, he's an older guy. He's, he's like the last guy still left in parliament uh, in Lithuania um, who was there uh, when the Soviets left. And he was one of the people who, uh, they, they were holed up in the building for several days with the, the Soviet military, only one shot was fired, they still have the, a bullet hole in the glass uh, on the building that they preserved, um, and the, the Russians just, uh, they didn't feel like fighting, so they, would, they just went home. Um, so they were very lucky, they didn't, they didn't have to fight, the Russians just decided to leave. Um, and so he's a, a very scholarly uh, guy, and he can read uh, Lithuanian, Polish, German, and English, uh, and he's on the board of some kind of Lithuanian, a uh, very old-fashioned Lithuanian encyclopedia project. So he's really interested in our work. And so he had printed out uh, the Wikipedia entry about a famous battle that happened 100 and something years ago between the Lithuanians and the Poles. Um, and he said, the Lithuanian version tells the Lithuanian side of the story, and the Polish version tells the Polish side of the story. Uh, the German said it was very short. The Germans didn't really have much about it. And I don't I, we probably can't conclude much from that. It's just something they didn't know. But he said it was really interesting. The English version was fabulous. He said it told both sides of the story and why there is still an active and, and legitimate historical conflict about what really happened at this battle. Um, and he said it seemed like this was a place where uh, the Polish people and the Lithuanians had uh, met, uh, you know, to sort of hash out the differences. Um, and in fact, we looked into it a little bit, and that's more or less what had happened. Some of the, the, the editors there had met and sort of figured out a compromised version. Um, and then over time, uh, the last time I checked, somebody said, yeah, actually both, most parts, because I talk about it a lot, but that the Polish and the Lithuanian versions have gotten better over time. That, that they've reincorporated to say, you know, maybe they, they're not quite balanced yet, but they at least acknowledge that, oh, there is a historical controversy about what happened. So this is the kind of healthy dialogue uh, that I'm seeing at Wikipedia, which I'm very uh, excited about. Uh, but, and she's giving me time up, um, the, the, the interesting thing is that I travel all over the world, and although uh, in different places it isn't uh, necessarily mostly white, mostly middle class people, um, that's because if you're in India, that's not who you find, but it's still, if you think about the, the social class of people um, all around the world, it's going to be basically this same uh, audience that we have here today. Um, it's, it's upper middle class, educated people, um, which isn't necessarily a bad group of people to be writing the history of the world. 